All right, so now we're going to look at how to gather data. So this is also, it, it won't come up as a mathsy question because it's not really maths, but they can ask you um, a number of these different types of questions. So things like different types of surveys, different types of studies, and then later on, good questions for questionnaires. So it can come up in the exam. Um, so first of all, there's about two different types of studies. You're either going to have your observational study, the first one, so you let something happen, and then you take down numbers or data from it. So example, if you want to count the colors of cars on the road, you just observe the traffic on the road, okay? So that's an observational study. Then a design study is you set something up to happen. So design study, you set something up to happen and take down data from it. So example are drug trials in pharmaceutical companies or else physics, chemistry, and biology experiments in school. They're all design studies. And then kind of another type, I guess you could say, is sample surveys. So when you go out and you ask people questions. So I guess that's sort of a design study. Um, but it sort of has its own its own little thing as well. So different types of surveys when you have to ask people questions, basically. You either have face-to-face -face interviews, you have telephone interviews, postal questionnaires, or online surveys. Those are the main categories. And each of them have their own advantages and disadvantages. So we'll go through them one by one. So first, face-to-face -face interviews. The advantages are you can get lots of details from the person because the interviewer can ask lots of questions. Um, disadvantages are it's pretty expensive to pay someone to... Uh, interview people. Telephone interviews then, you can get lots of details again because you can talk to them over the phone. Uh, again, it's a little bit expensive. It's not as expensive as face-to-face, -face, but you still have to pay someone to sit there on the phone uh, and call people. Postal questionnaires then, advantages are that they're quite cheap. All you need to do is send off loads and loads of letters. Um, and disadvantages are not many people reply and the people who do reply probably feel quite strongly for or against whatever you're asking them about so you get biased replies uh, which isn't great for data then online surveys then are sort of the last type again they're cheap they're really really easy to set up um, and then the same thing not that many people reply and only biased people generally will reply so those are sort of the main advantages and disadvantages um, so you should know kind of each type and then an advantage and a disadvantage. There are loads more advantages and disadvantages. I just wanted to keep it sweet and short, short and sweet. Okay, next you have to look at some good questions for questionnaires. So when you're making a questionnaire, say for some of these, um, any of these surveys, you have to make sure that there are good questions in it or else you could get biased answers. So we'll start to go through the list. So the first one is you have to have simple, concise language. Um, and short questions basically so just make it easy to read and easy to um, go through for the people so a lot of time in questionnaires the first few questions will be really easy and quick just really quick tick the box ones and then once you're halfway through they'll ask the harder ones uh, and that you're already kind of doing it then so most of the time people will just finish it um, you should include tick the box answers um, when you can they're better than sentence answers that's easier for you to look at the data later on and it's uh, easier for people to fill it out uh, you should include all possible options. So always include an other option for tick the box. Um, you shouldn't have any leading questions. So you shouldn't have a question like this. Normal adults can swim. Can you swim? So a lot of this stuff is quite obvious, but it's just it's really important. Um, and then the last one is you shouldn't ask for too much personal information. So things such as people's age, their weight or their income. And um, so if you do have to ask something like that, then give tick the box answers with a range. So 18 to 25, 25 to 32, people are less, uh, they don't mind as much when they just have to tick a box like that instead of give their exact age or weight. Um, so yeah, th those are just the main bits about um, gathering data, making surveys and observational studies. There's loads more information, but that's most what you need to know for the exam. So you should know, I guess, pretty much everything on this on this page and you should be fine. Okay, we'll see you next time and we're going to be looking at uh, type different types of sampling and then after that we can start with the with the real maths so if you like the video then share it with your friends uh, and we'll see you next time